Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. January the 2nd, 2017 is the date today. And uh, very interesting things happening around the world. Very odd things happening, I might add. And uh, I'm kind of having to blow up all of my screen pictures here. So it might be bigger on the background for you guys as well. Because uh, my uh, prescription uh, glasses there broke on, or lost the lens out of it today. And then when I was trying to take the arms off, put it on another pair I lost the screws, and of course, when you don't see, a, when you have as bad a sight as I do, you don't see, you can't find the screws either. So, I'm in a, uh, well, pretty odd predicament at this point, being able to read or see anything. Uh, U.S. lending support to the Baltic states fearing Russia. Uh, the New York Times is reporting yesterday they're sending a special forces uh, over to the. Uh, uh, I believe it's Lithuania that they sent these uh, supposed observers during military exercises invol involving multiple, na multiple nations at, at Camp Adani in Latvia. Uh, and just very strange to me that the U.S. is sending special forces. And I know there's a lot of people who believe that uh, the President uh, Barack Obama is going to create a third world war before leaving. But I'm really thinking that that's not going to be the case. I do believe that Donald Trump will actually get into office. Uh, I know there's still, you know, time for uh, Obama to create a third world war, but I don't believe that he will. Uh, I think there's going to be some other things happening, and we're going to be getting into some very serious issues here coming up on Israeli News Live. In fact, tomorrow night we have a very special treat for you, a very special guest uh, coming on, looking at some things that are happening or that have been discovered in the Middle East. I'm not going to give it away to you for you yet. I'll wait till you find out tomorrow night our special guests there. I kind of like to surprise people with things like that. Uh, but, but at any rate though, um, as far as uh, President Donald Trump, I, I appreciate the fact that he won't start a third world war as of yet. Uh, Obama, I don't think he will either while he is still yet in office, although he is doing some very shady things uh, with uh, the Middle East there with Israel. Uh, but this whole idea of sending in those special forces there, another way to provoke Russia, without a doubt. But, uh, you know, even Russia, we'll get into that in just a minute, but even Russia is doing some very strange things. That is President Putin, not so much his, his administration, but Putin is certainly increasing uh, his uh, connections there with Kissinger. We're going to go into that in just a minute. Your Newswire. Uh, dot com. Obama recalls all aircraft carriers setting up U.S. for an attack, is what they're stating there. I don't think the U.S. has to worry about an attack. I don't think we're going to see another Pearl Harbor, but uh, it is kind of odd that Obama would actually bring in all the aircraft carriers at one time unless he's using this opportunity to restock supply uh, equipped and prepare for something else on the horizon. And you know something, friends, I'm telling you, we know there's going to be a third world war. I played this uh, video here, some of the footage there, the audio of the 16-year-old as well as the 10-year-old boy there that saw not only third world wars. And I, and I know the 16-year-old doesn't say anything about aliens, but he talks about savages, like tribes of savages. Uh, he also describes some of these uh, godlike figures there, some of them being short, some of them being tall, and even some of them uh, looking like the gods on the statues, especially those in the Middle East of uh, Japan, China, and places like that. I really believe we're having an alien deception that is coming, and I think I'm going to share more and more of that with you guys, some of the thoughts that I have that is very, very serious uh, of, a, of an agenda go going to happen. I do believe that the Vatican... Uh, when I say the Vatican, Pope Francis specifically, is behind this alien agenda. Even Pope Benedict warned uh, the, the world that, that, that there was a Jesuit agenda for a alien agenda. And everybody talks about they're out there trying to look for extraterrestrial life. No, I believe that there is that type of what we call extraterrestrial life. But what I'm saying when I say that, though, I'm not just talking about Martians. I'm talking about demons. I'm talking about demonic beings. We talk about CERN. CERN, I believe, was created by some of those maybe that got left behind. You want to talk about left behind. The one thing that's been left behind is probably devils that got left behind on the earth here, even after the Andalusian destruction. We saw them in the times of David. I believe that there are still those types of beings here running the governments of the world in behind the scenes. Satan did. Did he not take Yeshua himself, Jesus that is, up there and he shows him all the kingdoms of the earth? He said, these are all mine and I can do whatever I want to with them. Think about it then. Who then is actually running the world? 
It's not just the elites. Who's running the elites then? There's something going on, friends, and I think it's something major going on, and I think something's going to have to happen for us, the humanity, those that are real believers that want to escape this damnable thing that's coming on the earth when World War III finally finishes up, and I think they're going to do World War III trying to weaken down the human race there so that when they come in to do their little nasty thing about you know cannibalism and everything else, they think they can get away with it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Like David, we are greater because the one that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And I am. I, I have no fear of it. I really don't. Anyway, sorry, I got off on a little side tangent there. Obama recalls all the aircraft carriers are import. Barack Obama has recalled 10 U.S. Navy aircraft carriers from the Middle East, leaving the United States wide open for a potential attack for the next Week, there will be no aircraft carrier stationed anywhere in the world for the first time since World War II. Um, well, they're saying Superstation 95 reports, uh, and I know a lot of people don't trust Superstation 95. I do know that it's on many other uh, areas already. Uh, even Alex Jones is reporting this as well, but the carrier USS Dwight Eisenhower and her strike group returned to Norfolk, Virginia Friday following a seven month deployment. The Ike launched hundreds of airstrikes against ISIS in Iraq and Syria from both the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf. Two destroyers in the Ike uh, strike group also saw combat. The USS uh, Nitz and the USS Mason were attacked uh, in the Red Sea when Iranian-backed Houthi uh, forces in Yemen launched cruise missiles, which were intercepted by the Mason. So just it is kind of odd that this is actually happening and that uh, the U.S. has actually returned so many ships to port, you know, um, I don't know if Obama is intentionally trying to set it up for an attack or not. Uh, I don't see a potential reason why that would actually happen. I know they try to say that Russia, oh, Russia is a great enemy of, of America. You know, if those ships were attacked in port, I'd almost say it was a, a self-made job here. Here's my big concern with Vladimir Putin right here, as it would be anybody that knows anything about the New World Order. Uh, it is said that Kissinger is the architect of the New World Order, and Putin is really starting to uh, gear up strongly with Kissinger, as well as Kissinger is in the United States, which reminds me of a good friend of mine that sends me some inside intel quite often, uh, that the BRICS uh, that was set up was actually part of the New World Order economic system. Uh, so, Kissinger's possible role in U.S.-Russian normalization is great news for Moscow. And again, that's another reason why I'm not so fond of uh, Donald Trump, because Donald Trump also is deep in bed with Kissinger. You might want to say that he's naive and just doesn't know any better, but I'm just, you know, there's just too many issues there. You know, anybody that can see it, Putin, as I said, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that I've took up for Putin on because I can see clearly Obama was throwing him under the bus, but when it comes to this new world order and Putin and, and Kissinger there, it shows to me, he may say he's not for the new world order, but he's got his hands in, in the hand with the man that... Uh, laid out the groundwork and the architect for the New World Order, and he has uh, definitely laid it out for Russia as well. So it says, in late December, the German newspaper uh, Bild reported that former United States Secretary of State Henry Kissinger would be involved in normalizing ties between Moscow and Washington. The analysts of the information obtained by the European intelligence from President-elect Donald Trump's transition team and cited by Bild revealed that the White House would go for a constructive cooperation with the Kremlin. So, Kissinger's the man, and everybody thinks that Donald Trump's such a great guy. And I actually was beginning to hope that maybe Putin was a little bit better man than that, but I see that there's uh, too close of a connection. South Korea, P-3 accidentally jet, uh, jetsoned its weapons into the Sea of Japan. Oh my gosh, it's starting to seem like South Korea is starting to learn a lot from the United States. Uh, you know, as uh, the old saying goes, it's better to get forgiveness uh, than it is to get permission. So I guess if you go ahead and drop a few bombs in the South China Sea there, excuse me, the, the, the Sea of Japan, uh, you could later say to the Japanese, sorry, didn't really mean to do that. It was an accident. We actually put, pushed the wrong button there. Uh, but now the question might, you might wonder though, even if it was an accident, why would they be dropping bombs over in the, in the Sea of Japan? Well, I have a feeling, like I said, I don't think it was so much an accident. They're just trying to get forgiveness for what they did. And it may have a lot to do with North Korea's 
SLBM with one ton nuclear warhead can cover all of South Korea, according to the experts. North Korea's submarine launched ballistic missile could strike the entirety of South Korea when armed with a one ton nuclear warhead, foreign missile experts said recently. The claims was made in a report released in December at the addition of the Institute of Korean Studies uh, titled North Korea Ballistic Missile Program. So maybe, maybe North Korea's uh, sub was in the uh, Japanese uh, sea there and they had detected it. That is, by the way, uh, South Korea, that is a, an anti-submarine uh, mission that they were on. So I have a feeling maybe they were actually trying to target uh, the North Korean sub that might have been there. So I don't really think it was really an accident. I think maybe it was something really intentional. Who knows? Only time will tell. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, we'll be keeping you up to date as things break on this end of the world here. Shalom and good evening and Happy New Year to all of you that are in 2017. And thank you for the cards that we got from so many of you wishing us uh, during this holiday season. Shalom.